Hello, I'm Fatima Behrad and in this video I want to teach you how to load and visualize medical images. In this video I use Brad's dataset as an example dataset and together we explore it. If you want to know this dataset better, watch my previous video. I run my code on Google Colab which is a perfect platform that allows you to write and execute Python in your browser. So let's begin. First, I have to connect to my Google Colab. Well, I usually upload my datasets on Google Drive so I can access them very easily. In order to connect to my Google Drive, I need to run this cell. Click on this link, then choose your Google account, sign in and get a code. Paste the code here and press enter. Now you're connected to your Google Drive and you can see a directory called Drive has been created for you. This folder contains all of your files in Google Drive. There are two Python libraries which are absolutely helpful for medical image analysis and in this tutorial I want to focus on them. One of them is SimpleITK and another one is Nipobab. In their website, they have provided a complete tutorial which helps you to work with these libraries better. This is SimpleITK website and as you can see it supports both Python and R. For example, here I choose image display and in the new page it shows how to use this library for image visualization. This is Nibobel website which tells us about working with this library. In the caption, I'll put their links. These libraries aren't installed on Colab, so I have to install them first. Now they are installed and I can use them. And here I import all required libraries. As my dataset is a zip file, I have to extract it first. I use zip file library to do that. In order to do that, I have to give the address of my zip file to this function. So I copy pass and write it here. The second parameter is the name of a folder in which all the contents of the zip file will be placed. Now our folder is created and I can use it to make a list of all image addresses. To do that, I copy its path and put it here. Glob function returns all file addresses that match a specific pattern. As you can see, we have 285 samples and each element of my list includes all file addresses related to each sample. Now let's read images. First, I read images using SITK library. To do that, I call SITK.readImage. In order to read images using Nibobel library, you need this line. Now we only need to call one of these two functions to read our image. But remember, read image SITK returns a SITK image and read image NII returns a NumPy array. As I told you in my previous video, for each sample in the Bratz dataset we have four modalities. For now I only consider flare image.
Let's check the shape of our image. As NII image is a NumPy array, we have to call dot shape. And if you want to check the shape of SITK image, you have to call dot get size. Both SRTK and NiBubble have their own characteristics which help you in pre-processing and data augmentation. In the next videos, I'll explain them more. Just for your knowledge, if you want to give these images to a neural network, you should give them as a NumPy array. So you need to know how to convert a SRTK image to a NumPy array and conversely. In order to convert a NumPy array to a SRTK image, you need to call SRTK.getImage from array. Just remember, in this conversion, the order of dimensions changes. Let's check it out. If you want a SRTK image, which is exactly similar to your NumPy array, you need to move access. But I don't recommend it, because when you convert it to a NumPy array again, it gets back to its first shape, so you don't need to worry about it. And in order to convert a SITK image to a NumPy array, just call SITK.getArray from image. If we check its shape, we can see that it has gotten back to its first shape. Now let's visualize our samples. I want to have an interactive figure which can be controlled by these parameters. Layer, which is chosen according to this dimension, 4 different modalities, 3 different views, and 285 patients. Well, first we have to read image using read image SRTK. As patient and modality are chosen by user, we write patient and modality here. Then we have to call SITK.getArrayView from image and use this array view for visualization. Well, this is our MRI and you can see some more very easily. You can change layer, patient, view and modality and check the result. Finally, in order to write a SITK image on the memory, we should determine the final pass where the image is going to be written. Remember that your file name must end with .nii.gz. Then we have to use SITK.writeImage. As you can see, our image is written on the memory. Well, this is the end of this tutorial. Just remember that you can find this code on my GitHub account. If you found this video useful, please press like and if you have any questions, just ask me. Thank you.